Now we start the second keynote speech. I'm Masaharu Takahashi from Chiba University, Japan, and serve as a chair of this session and general co-chair of this conference. I'm happy to invite uh, Dr. Na Masugi Inoue from National Institute of Information and Communication Technology, NICT Japan. The title of keynote speech is Toward Making the World More Resilient, a work on resilient communication and information sharing platform and its deployment. Firstly, I introduce Dr. Inoue's biography. Dr. Masu Inoue graduated from Kyoto University in 1992 and received his doctor engineering degree from the University of Tokyo in 1997. After she joined the Communication Research Laboratory, CRL, uh, which was reorganized as NICT in 2004, he contributed uh, to develop the world's fastest, fastest double run in millimeter wave bands, common signaling, uh, Mirai architecture in, in uh, heterogeneous networks for context aware service in the 4G era. ID locator spirit architecture, Himalis for future internet, etc. He has been working on a resilient platform system called NavNet, which has been developed and tested, operated in domestic and overseas locations. From 2016, one, uh, 16 to uh, 2021, the, he, uh, he works on the international cooperation and the operated ASEAN IBO, Japan US UNO, and Japan EU Horizon joint research programs. He has been his current position and since April this year. He was a visiting researcher at the Polytechnic University now NYU Wireless, New York in uh, 2000. He served as the chairman of the technical committee of mobile network and applications, MoMA, uh, now merged into SEMI in the IEIC Communication Society. He received the best paper award from IPSJ in 2006 and 2007, and the Young Science Prize in 2007 and the prize of science and technology in 2019 uh, from the Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technologies. He is a fellow of IEIC and a member of IEEE. Now, Dr. Nove uh, will give us your profound knowledge and experience. Dr. Nove, would you start your talk Please. Thank you, Professor Takahashi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear. I can. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your very kind uh, introduction. Yeah, uh, I wrote my biography too much. <laughs> uh, today, uh, thank you. I am very honored to have a, a keynote speech for this conference. And uh, Thank you very much for inviting me to have uh, this uh, opportunity here. I'd like to talk about three topics today. The first is resilience its expectation and issues in designing ICT systems. The second and the third are the technologies we developed. They might not completely have resilience that ICT systems should have ideally. However, I'd like to introduce them in particular to show you an example style of researchers activities toward making such technologies be used in real society. As you know, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, defines 17 goals. 
Goal nine, number nine, is to build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization, and to foster innovation. Goal 11 is to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. So we could say resilience is one essential requirement by nations toward making the world more resilient, what we can do. NICT is the sole national research institute in the field of ICT in Japan. It has three roles, research, funding, and public services. Under the five-year plan started last April, this year's April, we set four strategic fields based on five priority around the areas and open innovation activities. As the base of Beyond 5G research and related activities from this April, we published a white paper on Beyond 5G and 6G, Japanese version in March and English version in April. They are available online. We created the three scenarios in social life around 2035 and identified key technologies by backcasting, teraheads, space-time synchronization, radio emulator, extension to NTN, router high capacity optical network, etc. Resident ICT is also one key technology in this white paper. It is sure that not only NICT, but also other in initiatives define resilience as a key feature of beyond 5G and 6G systems. It is one of the new features for beyond 5G and 6G compared to 5G. This page is from Beyond 5G promotion strategy uh, published by the Japanese ministry. By the way, uh, what is resilience? What is the definition? I surveyed uh, papers and shows here uh, for uh, examples of resilience curve or uh, building and community, and city, and plant. Vertical axis is a functional level, the community, and performance. So vertical axes are different. However, they look, the curve looks uh, similar, basically. So, this picture shows image of resilience more clearly, I believe. The vertical axis, axis are performance, functional level, or activities, etc. And upon disaster, or incident, or failure, or pandemic, we would want to and need to minimize the drop as well as to accelerate the recovery as possible as we can. By doing these actions or making systems have these features, we could make systems or society more resilient. Further, we could make them much better than before. This is a very conceptual so we need to design information and communication systems having these features. There are still a lot of research issues, I think. So developing ICT systems having resilience is a challenging work. When we recall it and think future systems, they must be resilient against disasters and other incidents. 
providing basic communications and sharing information and geographical uh, maps, disaster areas, evacuation, shelters, individual safety and location, needs, supply and distribution of essential goods and food. With keeping these things in mind at NICT, my colleagues and I have been involved in the research, development, field testing, and deployment of some technologies. Resident ICT Research Center of NICT is our main facility for resident ICT, but our uh, headquarters in Tokyo and some other centers in other locations do research on resident ICT as well. This center was established and built in the campus of Tohoku University in Sendai City after the great earthquake and tsunami. We would like to make this center as a center, not only for NICT, but for all from industries, academia, and government who participate in research development and deployment. One outcome of this center is NAVNET. After the earthquake, we focused on improving le its resilience of data layer based on the previous NAVNET, which had been originally designed as a local area sensing and actuating network system. As for the current system, uh, you can easily construct its base station using computers on the market, plus Debian Linux based Navnet OS. You can easily configure and extend the network using LAN based systems on the market. You can make a network in any topology, including mesh. You can make a network in uh, it, it, sorry, it works as a multi-linked, uh, multi-hop, layer two distributed network and data platform, providing resident networking and distributed data processing. The reason why we named it Navnet is that we designed it as a regional network that provides various context aware services with the use of sensors and actuators. As if it works at the nervous system of our human beings. Regarding sensor information, we deal with basic uh, sensor information such as environment and individuals, but we paid much attention to uh, local oriented, fresh information, which is time sensitive information about a locality that may quickly become inaccurate or irrelevant of that local region. We thought information on such locality as well as individuals should be handled appropriately with regard to ensuring safety and security. In other words, it must be kept locally rather than remote or crowd on the network. When we designed NavNet, we en envisioned that the importance of local networks would increase. At that time, around 2010, almost all the data processing were performed in core networks or in internet, internet. The access networks were just pipe network between end devices and the core. We envisioned future access networks would perform data exchange and processing and the volume would increase step by step. They might exceed the cores one. So 10 years later now, Technologies for computing and networking for access networks gained big attention, as you know.
Most existing access networks are in three topology, though the internet is in semi-mesh topology. So failures in access networks could cause severe out of service. This is a weakness of the networking layer. On such network, most communications and data services are provided by servers on the internet. Each client or device needs to access them. If not, we cannot enjoy services. This is a weakness of the data layer. Navnet provide improves these weakness by allowing mesh topological network and in-network distributed data processing, performing these functions inside Navnet without the internet. Navnet have some distinctive features. You can make phone call and messaging without the use of the internet because necessary functions such as addressing, discovery, and call setup are all included. We know that public telephone services may become un unavailable when a disaster strikes. When a failure has occurred on the net communication path, the path is changed to another automatically in a short time, in a millisecond level. You can securely transmit your data through a VPN pipe between two devices. You can make the network more secure against the failures in the connection to the internet by introducing multiple uh, gateways to the internet. By making free use of the nature of the flat and distributed network, architecture, you can distribute your message from your terminal to others in an efficient and reliable way. Navnet works as a local cloud and you can develop and provide your own services to users in your region. Until now, we did feasibility studies, field tests, and a few deployments for permanent use in domestic locations and overseas locations, such as Cambodia, Thailand, Sri Lanka, and Nepal. Major use cases are a disaster, urban IoT, and rural areas. I'd like to introduce some of them briefly. We have been conducting a field trial of a resident in-town network in tsunami hit Onagawa town in Miyagi prefecture, Japan. The great earthquake and tsunami hit this town. We installed four base stations and two cameras and one signage terminal at the library. The left picture shows an officer at the town hall talks with other, another at the library, one of their uh, evacuation points without public telephone network. This is made possible only by Navnet. Also, they can conduct remote monitoring of tide height and flood near the Onagawa Bay. We have also been carrying out another trial in the town of Shirahama, Wakayama Prefecture, Japan. In summer, a lot of tourists come to this town, like this. It is said 10,000 people on the beach at the maximum. It is about half of the population of the town. By the way, the town must prepare for na uh, natural disasters, such as earthquake, tsunami, and typhoons. It is officially announced that mega scale earthquake and tsunami are predicted to take place in a trough of the Pacific coast of Japan. Tsunami height of several to 20 meters is predicted along the coast of the town. Also several times large typhoons hit this town previously. 
This motivates the town to demand a system that ensures the safety of residents and tourists. We installed 10 base stations in the center of the town and created five Wi-Fi areas, including two whole beach, uh, providing resident internet access for the residents and the tourists. Our system and trial provided incentive for companies to consider Shirahama as a remote office location. The town installed surveillance cameras and an additional two base stations for the companies setting up a remote office in that area. As users filled in a questionnaire when signing up for the service, useful survey information on tourism uh, trends was obtained. Uh, these are examples. Uh, from users' language, we know uh, more than a quarter is foreign people. And more than half visit the town for sightseeing. We also did performance evaluation in this town regarding route route switching performance. We observed the traffic traffic flow from base station four, number four, to base station one through base station two was switched over to another route like this in a very uh, short time, smoothly. Navnet was deployed in Tachikawa uh, in Tokyo and still there. Tachikawa is a ministry's backup area in the Tokyo suburb in case of disaster. 10 buildings of ministries are interconnected, allowing uh, local communications such as IP phone and data sharing, as well as internet access. We carried out a trial of administrative information delivery using uh, digital signage in Shiojiri City, Nagano Prefecture, Japan, for 19 months. It demonstrated one to n or one to many simultaneous content distribution on Navnet, which was composed of six base stations and four uh, PC-based digital signages screens at the center of the city. The city government provided over 10 kinds of uh, contents, such as weather, sightseeing information, bus schedules in normal times, and disaster situation, they provide disaster information. Survey results said over 90% residents expressed desire to provide the contents on these facilities. We conducted a similar but different trial in Asakusa area in Tokyo to demonstrate one too many simultaneous content distribution on public signage, public real signage on the street. The district attracts many foreign tourists because uh, they can enjoy Japanese historical cultures and places. So this district has a strong intention to prepare against disasters, as well as to provide much more attractive contents to tourists. During normal time, multiple signage screens are integrally controlled to provide entertainment for the whole area. On the other hand, in the dual, uh, disaster times, this can be switched at the administrator's handheld terminal to instead transmit the disaster information to inform residents. We are continuing to discuss how we can deploy the system as a permanent infrastructure and platform in this district. In parallel with these domestic activities, we initiated some international ones. Some of them are initiated based on NICT's global partnership. We have uh, regularly 
around 80 to 100 uh, MOUs on average with nearly uh, 30 uh, countries and regions. This number doesn't include collaborative research agreements. And uh, this uh, research framework for institutes and uh, universities in Southeast Asia and Japan called ASEAN IVO. Under this framework, we conduct multilateral joint project. In the last five years, we had uh, nearly uh, 30, uh, 300 researchers participating in 28 uh, joint projects. These projects are to develop and implement ICT-based solutions to social problems and topics shared by the ASEAN region. Our first trial was in Cambodia. About five years ago, we deployed a network from the capital city, Phnom Penh, which is about, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Phnom Penh to a village in a rural area, number one in this map, which is about 100 kilometers north from the Phnom Penh, using Telecom Cambodia's optical fiber network, plus long distance Wi Fi and microwaves. Then we succeeded in providing internet access to the local people. Actually, elementary and junior high school students could enjoy English mathematics and other learning content there. The second trial was made in another place, but it is also rural and in much severe condition. I'll talk it later. The objective of this field test is to verify the capability and the performance of NavNet in providing basic data communication in such rural areas where electricity uh, and the basic telecom services are not enough or not available. Our technology could help upgrade so-called telecenter, which plays a key role in providing education to residents not only students, but also uh, middle and senior ages to eliminate educational disparities and eradicate poverty. In addition to these social needs, another key factor for the reason we tried our technology there is that this. Navnet feeds to Cambodia where disaster happens every day, everywhere. The disaster means, in this case, with a climate change or a construction, a power shortage, a failures. Actually, we need to wash the solar panel frequently. Okay? This is a kind of disaster. So sometimes our network stopped, but later it restarted automatically without manual operations due to NavNet capability. Uh, this is the uh, diagram of the, our network system. Here, the left side is the Phnom Penh and the right side is the uh, rural area. Okay. And we succeeded in providing internet access and they could enjoy the uh, learning contents on the internet like this. And also we succeeded in the data sharing between the rural area and the Phnom Penh using the NavNet uh, capability of computing. Okay. The second trial was to provide educational content sharing in a very, very remote area where 3G coverage is very limited. Once the contents can be copied from the server in Phnom Penh to the gateway node in remote area located in 3G coverage, just edge of the coverage, then shared with other nodes via uh, basically Wi-Fi connections. Our partners in Cambodia are there, uh, could design and install the system 
because at that time we de developed all the NavNet functions in the packaged software running on the Raspberry Pi, for example. Easy installation using such inexpensive common devices motivated our partners to do it by themselves. In this way, NavNet changed more flexible and user-friendly. However, our trial location for the second time was uh, on the river, on Tonlesa Lake and River. So from the capital, Phnom Penh, several hours driving and one hour boating to that area and a very strong sunshine with no roof. It was in the dry season. It was very hot experience. After landed in front of the local residents and the local authorities, we made explanation of our smart village project nearby the grounded but floating shaped school. This is a school. Okay. When we initiate an international project, in particular located in such emerging countries and regions, we think it is very important to think about how we can realize and ensure the sustainability at the local, namely human resource development, operation and maintenance by local people, and local business ecosystem. In this second trial, not Japanese NICT, but Cambodian NIPTIC, our partner, gave lectures and training of NavNet technology to the local people. By the way, have you ever seen this shape of houses? This shape is for a rainy season. There are the, our partner in Cambodia uh, developed and installed the system like this. And not only the system, they also developed the application. Okay? The application for the educational contents, uh, management and sharing like this, English, the grammar and uh, examinations, okay? This kind of applications. Based on these activities, where already 14 schools are equipped with this system, we proposed to an international organization to fund our third trial to extend the system into 41 schools toward configuring national scale school net in near future. This is an ongoing project started in January 2020 and have been designing pilot test system online under COVID-19 between partners in Japan and Nepal. Uh, Dulu uh, municipality uh, Duru municipality is located in such mountain area in Nepal. There are many small villages or colonies on hills. It takes long time, several hours on foot from one village to another. Okay. There are already basic physical network deployed by our partner KDDI Foundation and local NPOs and so on, which is composed of optical fibers and Wi-Fi and uh, interconnecting key uh, locations. The fiber is designed specific to rural area. It is already standardized at ITUT. It is very light but very strong, easy to install by hand. In this project, we will additionally install some more fibers to make the network semi-mesh topology and NavNet needs nodes at some locations, providing online remote healthcare 
education, and governmental information services. Toward that, uh, we have been uh, transferring our technology, know-how, and skills to Nepal side, like this. Also using the chat uh, functions. Recently, we have contacted trial using LoLa mesh technology we developed. Navnet is good at interconnecting key nodes at broadband, broadband speed, okay. as if it works as basic infrastructure. General LoLa is a radio link technology categorized as LPWA. And the coverage is roughly uh, three kilometers in the urban area and up to 10 kilometers in rural area. The coverage is still small to cover cultivated and mountain areas. So we developed LoLa mesh, which it can extend the coverage with our proprietary flooding based data multi hopping technologies like this you can configure the multi-hop LoLa uh, network. Using LoLa mesh and Navnet, we will do pilot testing of disaster resident communication network in Kandy city in Sri Lanka. Kandy city is in mountain area where tea leaves are planted. In such a geographical location, there happens landslides after heavy rain. So their first need is to realize landslide early warning system. And after one year feasibility study project, we concluded to do pilot testing of a system, which is not only for early warning, but also for daily services. This need is very common, namely need for a multi-purpose system, which is useful every day rather than a disaster specific system. In my experience, almost all the local authorities want, need such system. In this case, we put sensors for water level, weather, a tea factory, indoor weather. As for actuators, we put outdoor speaker, a lot call buttons for pregnant women or aged person. We are hoping COVID will end soon. Then we can do this pilot testing there in Sri Lanka. We did experiment of sharing ambulances information using LoLa mesh and Navnet in a disaster drill with six hospitals in Tokyo. The hospitals were interconnected with Navnet, while each uh, ambulances were connected to a hospital with LoLa mesh. Without using public networks, uh, we succeeded in sharing la ambulances location and status information and the hospital's information about its availability among the hospitals. Also, we verified that Navnet plus private LTE allowed intranet phone and sharing of vital data, such as cardiogram, pulse, SPO2 from ambulances. Also, we did the experiment of the LoLa mesh for or backing up the uh, control plane uh, data transmission in the disaster situation. Okay. But I will skip the details today. Based on our experiences I talked today, I can say something about the key to advancing smartness and resilience of towns and cities. The first is getting locals to understand the benefit of the technology. It's important to have the understanding of local organizations and citizens. This is why experts 
technical experts visit the region and conduct demonstrations. However, this takes a lot of time usually, and such efforts, such great efforts, such big efforts may not produce journal papers, unfortunately. Second, uh, leaders, leadership, and understanding of local leaders are also essential, especially where uh, progress is very slow because of vertical administrative systems in a layered organizations. In summary, a leader with strong leadership or just one staff having strong will is necessary to promote the introduction of new technology into their town. This is the last slide. Resilience of ICT and resilience by ICT are uh, very challenging topics, I think. Since it seems systematic R&D in ICT field is needed, is necessary compared to other sectors such as building, plant, community, city, which I showed earlier. We would need to classify the impacts posed by disasters, failures, incidents, and to define KPI of resilience for systems and to develop methodology of evaluating the resilience and to analyze the resilience of existing and proposed systems and to do R&D for improving resilience of ICT and the resilience of society by using ICT. Not only R&D, but we would need to promote such systems be introduced into real society. Towards that, we would need to think about how we can increase investment in improving network resilience since it is costly, basically. So we would need to calculate the cost effectiveness, not only disaster situations, but in stable times. Today, uh, lastly, I hope many of you have interest in this area and have collaboration in the near future. Uh, thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much for your wonderful talk. Uh -huh. Nowadays, uh, information is highly variable for mankind. So I think this system was very important against this cell. Uh, so uh, I'd like to open for discussion. If you have any question, uh, please raise your phone button. And okay, I have one question. So, Professor Hadama, uh, please talk your mic. Thank you, Professor Kodama. I am uh, Hadama. Uh, I am reading your questions in uh, Q&A uh, functions. Oh. Uh, professor, uh, professor uh, my, my question is the who who can uh, of the cost the I think the government should be uh, responsible for the resilient system but the Mm. There will be some discussions. Yes, yes. So please give give us some comments. Yes. First, yes, uh, we expect the government to support uh, some amount or full amount of such cost. And uh, yes, the government uh, have the uh, such uh, supporting program sometimes for some systems. 
but not all. So I think we cannot expect everything for the government, mm -hmm. actually. So uh, in, in our trial and in our research, we are talking with local authorities that uh, how we can, uh, can I say, uh, how we can maintain and operate uh, the such a uh, system by using the system and for example open the system to the uh, to the uh, companies for example and they use the system to uh, distribute the advertisement for example uh, so the multi-purpose uh, daily useful system is important in in that sense, to make money every day to maintain that system itself. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm. Any other question or comment? No? Okay, I have one question. Uh, you collected the various system on the market at many countries. Uh, what difficulty uh, and problems uh, have you encountered, encountered? Yes, actually, yes, we had the such problems recently. Uh, in my talk, I introduced the example in the Nepal. Navnet base station, you can configure the base station using the computer on the market. So in, for example, in Japan, we can easily buy such computers on the market. But in Nepal or in some other countries, the computer is very, very general and common. You can find the computer, for example, on the Amazon. But in real, in real, in some countries, in some region, they cannot get such very general and common computers. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, this is uh, the real story. But, but uh, what I can say, uh, at least, at least uh, uh, we, we, we should design our system that we can make such system using such common devices. Okay, thank you. Any other question, comment? No? Okay. Uh, I'd like to thank again, Dr. Inoue. Thank you. Oh, I'd like to close this session. And I, I'd like to thank uh, all participants for their uh, attention uh, this session. Okay. So, next session.